Hello everybody, hopefully your quarantine is still going all right. Mine's not going too bad though. I do have a little bit of like really quick life news before I get into the actual article itself. I will be changing studios, so I don't know if this whole look is going to be what I'm going to continue with now that I got this channel on like, I think it's six different local channels. They're offering different studios and stuff that I could use there. So we will see, I'm also moving. So if you don't hear from me for like a week, I'm trying to figure that out. In addition to that, something that I apologize for that's really pissed me off. There's a freaking crack through these curtains that are along the side of this wall and the light always shines perfectly in and then it just messes up the lighting system. So I apologize if that goes crazy today. We don't get a lot of sunlight in Oregon and the times we do, a lot of times I have to redo these videos like six different times just because of this freaking lighting system. So like for example, an eight minute video might take an hour. That's just how it works sometimes. Just thought I'd let you guys know that in case everything starts to spaz out like it probably will. Okay, moving forward, here is the title of a New York Times article that I'd seen. Quote, Russia secretly offered Afghan militants bounties to kill U.S. troops, intelligence says. American intelligence officials have concluded that a Russian military intelligence unit secretly offered bounties to Taliban-linked militants for killing coalition forces in Afghanistan, including targeting American troops amid the peace talks to end the long-running war there, according to officials briefed on the matter. So pretty much what is happening is Russia appears to not want us to leave Afghanistan, which shouldn't exactly be surprising to anybody considering the fact that we funded the Mujahideen. I think that's how you say it, Mujahideen, yeah. Mujahideen back in the 90s against Soviet Russia. So they're essentially trying to do the same thing against us, which go figure. So not only are they probably trying to do a little get back there, but in addition, probably the more important aspect here is the fact that we are also, we being the United States, we're in Ukraine right now. According to the Council on Foreign Relations' Global Conflict Tracker, in 2018, the U.S. sold anti-tank weapons to Ukraine along with around $1 billion in defensive aid since the war began in 2014. Which, by the way, just to emphasize that point, so we gave Ukraine money and then they bought U.S. weapons company products. So we have multi-billion dollar companies and they're buying products. So essentially we gave them money to give to our multi-billion dollar corporations profiting off their war. Now that's not the point here. I'm just throwing that out as like a little interesting fun fact, like a whole like, hold on, let's do a little pause. Let's think about this for a second. Does that sound right? Doesn't sound right. But is it surprising? No. Anyway, moving forward. So I guess the United States intelligence officials, like some of them at least, knew about this for months and have been sitting on it. And I guess they're trying to like weigh all the options between like diplomatic talks. Do we do like sanctions or do we do more serious responses, quote unquote, which is not really specified in the article. But like if you're talking about invading Russia or attacking Russia, just go ahead and say it. Don't dance around it because then it gets kind of awkward. You're like, wait, hold on. More serious responses? Are you trying to fight them directly? Are you trying to do what they're doing to you, but like increase it in Ukraine? Or like, what exactly is the deal here? Just go ahead and say it. That is my point. But anyway, according to Zabilohla Mujahid, which is a spokesperson for the Taliban, which I know for a fact I butchered that name. I apologize for disrespecting names. Maybe not to this guy, but just generally speaking. So here is what he says, quote, these kinds of deals with the Russian intelligence agency are baseless. Our target killings and assassinations were ongoing in years before, and we did it on our own resources, he said. That changed after our deal with the Americans and their lives are secure and we don't attack them. Hmm. Well, I mean, that's kind of interesting, right? It's like he's blatantly saying that they're not doing it. Now, do we believe them? <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Why would you believe anybody from the Taliban? Like... The interesting thing about terrorist organizations is that usually their grievances are pretty similar to the general public. Like, for example, like, why are you occupying us when we don't want you to be here? So in those respects, their grievances are usually pretty similar to the public. So you should put a little bit of weight towards it. But in terms of like believing his word, I mean, come on. So my guess is that how this is going to work is that there's probably going to be a backdoor deal where the U.S. will limit their assistance to Ukraine and Russia will allegedly stop trying to send money to kill U.S. and allied troops. But what will be very interesting is what is going to happen once the military moves to the Indo-Pacific region. So the U.S. military plans on, and this was months ago, they are planning on pulling troops from Afghanistan and sending it to the Indo-Pacific region to, to essentially challenge India, China, and Russia on both the East and the West. 
What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Now, in terms of the use of force or not, I mean, the populist left and the populist right don't want any more wars. So then that kind of makes me think that Trump might not want to go into this war. But more than likely, and I was just giving him the benefit of the doubt for half a second, more than likely what's going to happen is that there's going to be an increased escalation with Russia. A lot of times what happens is with the increase of war, specifically during election times, people tend to fall in line with the current leader as kind of like a scare tactic. So could this be manipulated in order to be used as political gain? What do you think? What do you think? We'll see.